Hello YouTube, Welsh Gamer here, the Welsh Gamer is speaking. And, in case it wasn't obvious, this video is regarding Crackdown 3. And, um, I'm gonna be honest, right, I, I wasn't, I wasn't even planning on doing this video. Um, I've been somewhat distracted lately, like, like I've been playing a shit ton of Apex Legends and I haven't even touched the Division beta, ow. Um, but like, there's been a lot of like, uproar regarding Crackdown 3, especially on Twitter. Um, people complaining, people saying that it's not as good as they thought it was going to be, people not overly thrilled with the gameplay. Once again, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I haven't looked into it deeper, but uh, you know, I'm, it's come to my attention that outlets such as IGN and I'm assuming others are tearing it apart, saying it's, not, it's this, it's that. One quote that I'm pretty sure is, is is a genuine quote, something of the effect of four years in the making and that this is what we get. Are you serious, Xbox? Like question mark. I believe that was off IGN. Uh, stinks of Ryan McCaffrey, but you know, just saying. Um, yeah. So, in a nutshell, in a nutshell, it's clear <laughs> at this point that Crackdown Three, much like every Xbox exclusive is destined to be raked over the coals. Um, it's okay. Before I continue, I do want to just be very clear now. Just before, just about every person just assumes naturally that I'm gonna just, you know, bleed green and, and wave the red, the green flag, and, and plead my. My, my wholehearted like defense force skills uh, again you know for crackdown 3 I'm not a huge fan of crackdown generally like I've played crackdown one I never touched crackdown 2 apparently it was, it was you know that's a good thing because apparently crackdown 2 is garbage um crackdown 3 I can honestly say I have not been a huge proponent for it with the exception of its multiplayer but I will get to that in a moment but but yeah, just to be clear, I'm not a huge fan of Crackdown, so this is not me defending Crackdown because it's Crackdown, because it's an Xbox exclusive. All I'm defending is the simple fact that... Well, the simple fact of the matter is, like, you know, if you really break it down, the game isn't even out yet, and from what we've seen, at least from what I've seen, and I've watched all the same gameplay you have, I even watched the Inside Xbox uh, that recently was aired, uh, with Major Nelson and the gang, and they shown some new Terry Crews stuff and some new gameplay, and and from what I've seen, while I'm not like oh my god because like I said I'm not I'm not a huge Crackdown fan, but from what I saw it was enough for me to think hmm, you know okay cool, um but again from what I saw I am not understanding where all this hate is coming from. I don't understand where all this hate is coming from. Um, end of the day, looking at it, it just looks like a crackdown game. It just looks like a crackdown game. It doesn't look any worse or better. It, it just looks like a crackdown game. Obviously, if you were to compare it side by side to crackdown one, there's going to be significant graphical upgrades and all these different things. That's a given. But I just mean... It looks like a Crackdown game. It looks like Crackdown, but in 2019. Like, and I don't remember Crackdown 1 or 2 getting this level of like, bloody hatred before it's even come out. And I just don't understand like where it comes from. And that's where, again, apologies if it sounds biased, not biased, but like damage control or whatever, but I just can't help but wonder if it is just because it's an Xbox exclusive. Because... It just seems to be a pattern. We had it with Sea of Thieves. We had it with State of Decay 2. And the only time people get quiet is when the likes of Undead Labs or Rare or Xbox or Mikey Bar or one of these drop a tweet on about how many players are actually playing these games like Sea of Thieves, State of Decay. And then th th it's just silence then. You know, obviously you're never going to get people going, oh yeah, fair enough, we are wrong. Because that'd mean, uh, that'd be, you know, that'd be admitting that you're wrong. But people just go quiet. Have that in the background, why the hell not? Um, but it's just insane to me. Like, Crackdown 3 is going to be 
I suppose, the next like major exclusive for the Xbox since State of Decay 2, if I am not mistaken. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, if there's been one in between, but like, you know, in terms of on my radar, Crackdown 3 is the next one, and then the one following that, the like, major exclusive, will be Gears 5. And I fully expect this level of hatred for Gears 5. If you remember with Gears 4, IGN said that there was too much A button bashing. Fuck you! It was a Gears game. A, literally, the most used button is the A button, believe it or not, because it's the main button for the cover to cover mechanics, wall bouncing on the online. But, you know, that's where I'm getting at. So now Crackdown's coming, and naturally it's going to attract a lot of hate. Uh, but the thing is, this is my ultimate question here, this is what blows my mind. When you've got a game like Days Gone over on the PlayStation, which has, from what I gather, at least the last I even acknowledged, because it was, you know, I see tweets all the time, I look, sometimes I respond, sometimes I like, sometimes I retweet, but very often I'm just flicking through and I'll see like tweets and trends and certain like groups of people clamming around a certain topic and at this one point in time, Days Gone was kind of being under, was under the mic, you know, magnifying glass because because uh, of its development, it, the development side of it wasn't looking very good and people were worried will it even come out. Some were saying there's been a significant downgrade. Um, uh, all, all, like, all different, I can't remember the ins and outs, but Days Gone was having its issues apparently. But that kind of just what got swept under the rug like, r like almost instantly. And what I'm getting at is, with Days Gone, to look at, to look at Days Gone, again, my apologies if I sound like an Xbox green bleed green green flag xbox fanboy but days gone literally just looks like the traditional sony entertainment first party like you know sony interactive entertainment first party like formula like god of war or or this fedex simulator strand death stranding or um last of us or or more specifically because it does look very similar Uncharted, but with zombies instead of, like, you know, Indiana Jones enemies or, or bloody, I don't know, or, or, or Greek mythology characters to kill. Like, it's the same for me just to look at, because I just talked about to, how, to, how, you know, how just from looking at Crackdown 3, how it, the impression I got, it just looks like a Crackdown game, but in 2019, Days Gone, which was barely even touched upon when it'd been having issues. And that, you know, that just looks like the same chalk and cheese game we've seen time and time again from Sony, in my opinion, from the naked eye. To play, possibly different. Why I'm making this connection is because Crackdown 3, yes, what, yes it's been in development for a while, but there's been, there's been a reason for that. And a very significant reason, a very important reason of that. The un indestru indestructible, the 100% destructible environments in the multiplayer. Now this is my ultimate question, I did just say it a moment ago, but this is the question I'm asking you. How is it possible that a game like Days Gone, which isn't breaking through any barriers, it isn't knocking down any walls, it's not innovating, it is the same game you've played ten times already, but with zombies and a motorbike instead of a lasso and some bloody treasure hunting thieves, versus Crackdown, which is literally setting a new milestone for game development. It might be in its infancy. I caught the Crossfire podcast a couple of nights ago. Um, Mooch and a good friend of mine, uh, Saltis Gaming, were on there, um, and they were back and forth with Xbox 448, talking about, you know, is this technology too soon to be shown? And Salty and Mooch's argument was um, that when the buildings do blow up and everything, it kind of just flaked away and disappeared and, and, and it didn't look very nice to the, to, to the eye. Like, you know, it wasn't very aesthetically pleasing. Now, like, you know, to that, to that I say, like, fair enough. If that's, if, if that's how you feel on a personal level, it didn't look good for you, then fine. Uh, you know, Salty's my boy. I love Salty. Mooch, I've had a few acquaintances with him. Seems a lovely dude. I like his work. Um, so no disrespect there. I respect what they're saying. But my only counter is... If you've got it, show it off. Like, bottom line, okay, maybe it's in its infancy to the point where they haven't got it to the point where 
if a building goes down, the pieces stay there and it looks more realistic. I don't know. But, end of the day, they have cracked it. They have, they have broken into new territory. Crackdown 3 is going to be delivering, for the first time ever, 100% destructible environments in its multiplayer. Now that just opens up a bucket load of things for future games, especially with Xbox's first party. And in case you haven't noticed, Xbox's first party gets shat on on a regular basis. Well, when life gives you lemons. And um, from not having any at all to now having too many, people complaining that Xbox just buys studios and it's like, well, how else do they get? How else do people get studios? I don't know. My point is, this is a pattern we see all the time, and I'd like to see it stop. With the, you know, especially with Crackdown, like because even if whether you're a Crackdown fan or not, because I've said I'm, I'm not a huge fan. I'm gonna play it because it'll be on Game Pass. Um, but it's breaking new ground. It's 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 doing something that no other game has done, and it's getting more hate, more hate than a game over at PlayStation that was seeing difficulty in its development and is just cookie cutter. Like nothing, like that, like I just don't, like I'm, I'm only making the comparison, not because I hate Days Gone, I know very little of it, but I'm just making that comparison because I don't get how a game like Crackdown, which with all its shortcomings or, or, or whatever, if there is any, uh, for people who don't like the cell shaded graphics or like the fact that it's taken four years to be developed or more or whatever, like whatever your feelings towards Crackdown, they, those are your own, I respect them. But... How can people like IGN, who are supposed to be the voices of the gaming industry, the people that we as the gamer are supposed to look up to for our information, um, for all the interviews, all the behind the scenes stuff, their professional opinion on these games, and their, their opinion it couldn't be any less than professional, because you're critiquing and giving people a, 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 you know, creating a stigma and giving people an impression of a game in a negative way when they should be commending what they're doing. I don't know, I, I, in a nutshell, on, you know, to wrap this video up, I just don't see why any of Xbox's games get unnecessarily criticised, really. I'm, I can't wait for Gears 5, but I know for a fact that that game is going to get critique just going to be too much A button or too much this button or it's, there's going to be some like you know long long reach excuse for why that game's going to be crap and bottom line it does boil down to the fact that it's an Xbox game it does it's just a pattern I've come to accept uh, it doesn't bother me anymore it used to it, it used to annoy me I used to be like uh, you know in my earlier days of YouTube thinking like oh, I'm going to fight the good fight I don't care anymore People can hate or love what they like, you know, people can hate what they hate, love what they love. It doesn't bother me, I'm going to enjoy these games regardless. Um, you know, like, Crackdown 3 might be crap. Like, Crackdown 3 might come out. It might be absolutely garbage. It might be ter terrible. That's what I mean. I'm not defending Crackdown itself. I'm just creating, um, um, I'm just defending Crackdown as an entity, like, as an idea, like, it's getting hated when it's the only game doing what it's doing. It's getting critiqued before it's even properly released. People are slamming it who haven't even played it. The Twitter street, you know, you only have to look on Twitter. You've got ponies beyond ponies slamming on this game. And it's like, these are all people that are not even going to play it. They have no intention of playing it. They have no intention of buying it. They've probably looked at the same footage me and you have. And they've come to these mad, like you know, conclusions that this game is going to suck, and it's like, you don't know that. Your only word on whether it's going to suck or not is some biased asshole at IGN who's raked, who's literally, literally, like, torn apart every Xbox game this generation because they can, because it's clicks, and it get, it, you know, it's what gets them their bread, it's what pays for their soup and beans at the end of the week, it's what keeps the light on in the building, like, they, they need the clicks. You know, like I said, that's all I got for you. Crackdown could be bad, it could be good, but don't judge it based on these things. And, um, you know, respect what it's doing because it is the first game to be doing what it is doing. I'm looking forward personally to trying out uh, the 100% destructible environment, seeing it for myself in action. And you just got to think of the future, guys. Like, it took a while, they finally cracked it, 
but this feature is going to be seen in, in Xbox's first party. Like all these acquisitions, all these games, um, you know, the next, the future Halos and Gears and future IPs that come from Xbox could well and truly utilize the 100% destructible environments to its full potential up the line, which is why Crackdown should be commended because it's breaking new ground. It's started, it'll, before you know it, in time to come, more games will be doing this and people will probably forget, but they shouldn't forget the fact that Crackdown is what started it. 100% destructible environments. It's just, it's, that deserves commending and it doesn't deserve critiquing and I think <clears throat> Crackdown deserves a fair shake. It might not be game of the year, but it's probably going to be a fun game. I, I have no doubt it's going to be a fun game, um, but that's all I've got for you. Anyway, that is The Welsh Gamer. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, that's all I've got for you. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Dislike if you hated it. Let me know if you disagree or agree in the comment section down below. Hit the bell icon for, to stay tuned for more opinion videos like this. That's all I've got for you. That is The Welsh Gamer. The Welsh Gamer has spoken. <laughs>